<laughs> Basically, what we have set up in the room is a, is a patient simulation. And what you need to imagine is uh, this is the tumor in the patient's body. And if you see this sphere here, the sphere is moving. We all move. Whenever we're laying on a table, we may move from, or roll from side to side. But probably the most critical movement is movement as we breathe. And the cyber knife unit is actually able, as you look in the ceiling, there are x-ray tubes here and here. And they shine down in the center of the table. And basically what they do is every 15 seconds, an x-ray unit is cross-firing on the tumor. And it's sending that information back to the computer console. In addition, the CyberKnife software is, has an um, intelligent algorithm. And it's actually able to learn it's actually able to learn where the patient is breathing. And it comes up with an algorithm so at any instance in time, it's gonna know where that tumor is in the body. If it even thinks that it doesn't know where the tumor is in the body, it shuts down and it sends us a message to go back, you know, start over again and let's start tracking the tumor again. So it's a fail-safe technology to make sure the beam is on the tumor. In addition, as we talked about in many different directions, the cyber knife is able to move underneath the tumor and surrounding the tumor just like a sphere in this whole area. It's also able to go over to this table and it's able to pick out different shaped beams. And it's basically like putting paint in a bucket. The cyber knife is able to pour paint from different sides, different amounts of paint to fill that bucket where we're wanting to treat the tumor. Um, pretty smart technology. Doctor, yes. question. When you were talking about um, lateral damage in traditional radiation, and, um, and is a lot of that caused by just breathing? Is that the main? Well, to, to accommodate for breathing, you have to treat a larger area with traditional radiation units. And we don't have to. The accommodation is done by the robot. Right, but, it, but in traditional means of radiation, was that a problem? Yes, absolutely. Knowing where the tumor is, you have to treat a much bigger area. Right. Yeah. Y'all able to start the demo? Alan, am I on your way? You're good. Am I on your way, Alan? Just fine. I'll make it better. <laughs> So as you can see, the, the robot, it's a very fine motion as it's moving with that sphere in the center of the table. It's actually breathing with that sphere. And it's repositioning itself to treat the tumor from a different direction. We're able to treat from as many as 150 different directions on the tumor. So we're able to accommodate for a different beam size for a different shaped tumor. We're able to treat irregularly shaped tumors. If we had a tumor that was shaped like a dog bone, we could treat the shape of a dog bone. typically been taking about 30 to 40 minutes. First treatment usually takes a little longer while we're getting accustomed to the patient's breathing pattern, so maybe as much as an hour. Do they feel pain after the procedure at all? None at all. They don't feel anything during or after the treatment. So they just kind of lay there and it's just... That's correct. Um, we do cause some side effects, typically about a week after treatment. There's a, a minor acute radiation burn surrounding the tumor. I think y'all heard Mr. Gardner talk about some discomfort that he had that we expect uh, to a different degree in most patients, but uh, uh, it's usually very mild. How do they treat that? Do they have to come back in, or is that something that can be? Simple medications to help provide relief. Over the counter or prescription through this? A couple of those.
and a lot of times it's the teacher time that uh, a week after the treatment things heal, and we know that. basically a group that we get together and we talk about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate, and what patients are good patients for the treatment, and what, sort of what a standard regimen would be anywhere from one to five treatments depending on that circumstance. One, you said one to five is standard? Or you, there's no one to five treatments? In tip, correct. Um, if we are delivering one treatment, usually it's a smaller tumor and we're very uh, confident with the accuracy. Uh, sometimes if it's five treatments, we're worried about the prior radiation that the patients had, and we want to reduce their risk of damage, so we get a little bit less at any daily treatment over a longer period of time. that are up at the top, were they part of that software package you were talking about, the, the first in the world to get that, or is that? The, um, the x-ray tube technology is also off the shelf. It's the software that improves the accuracy. So if this is, these x-ray tubes are taking a, a picture at every 15 seconds, we know in that picture where the tumor is. What we want to know is what's going on in between those 15 seconds. And that's where the computer algorithm helps us. But normally, they would look at the little uh, golden pellets that you were talking about? or They would look at a gold pellet, but now it's actually able to see the tumor density in the body without having to have those gold pellets. So it can see the different density of the cancer versus the normal lung surrounding it. So the normal lung is darker, the cancer is wider, and it's able to determine where that white spot is and target on that white spot. Doctor, what makes a good candidate? What makes a good candidate? Uh, patients need to have, uh, they, they really need to have a focal tumor. If they have multiple tumors in multiple areas, then, then it's not an appropriate technology. But we have, if we have a single tumor that we're able to, to concentrate on, then we're able to help them. Multiple tumors in multiple areas are probably best for traditional radiation. Correct. Or chemotherapy. Or chemotherapy. Now there are patients that we're treating as many as two or three brain tumors, and we usually will stage those. And we've had a couple of lung cancer patients that had tumors on either side of the lung. That, that were treated by this. Or yes, but we have to select those cases pretty carefully. Yeah. They usually have to be some pretty special circumstances. <laughs> it's also not appropriate for patients that have had surgery that have had the tumor removed, and we've seen a few patients that have been referred for that. And conventional radiation is usually their best option to try to get the roots of the cancer. We really have to have a tumorinitis that we're able to, to focus the beam on. Yeah, let's let Mr. Gardner tell you about this trip. If you look at, we don't have a signal time. 
if you lay in there, you've got to do something. So what I was going to do in the doctor's office is count the ceiling tiles and figure out the square footage of the room, and then if the doctor's still not in there. It's usually they leave you in there half naked on a cold slab. I don't know how they do you that way. <laughs> Table, so they have padding. 